Well hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking our first steps towards making a production part for the Fiesta RS style spoiler. What we've done here is to apply a special top coat resin uh, which provides a lovely interface and it's very glossy and can be polished up ready for taking moulds off the parts. And I've been making some efforts to introduce some better engineering interface which are bespoke to fill up all the gaps. So I've used a bit of body filler here on the end plates and now I'm getting ready to give things a coat. So here is the epoxy coating resin. It's mixed up much in the same way that you would with a polyester resin. So you have two parts uh, that you mix together. And in this case, I'm adding some black pigment so it's more visible once it's been applied to the part. Once that's fully incorporated and mixed through, you can then add the catalyst. Uh, in this case, it's uh, an epoxy hardener so only mixing up a small batch here. Uh, once that's been thoroughly mixed for 30 seconds or so, switch off the scales, grab a paintbrush and lay it on. Now the application process is quite similar to that of gloss paint. Uh, so basically you want to provide a nice smooth even coat over the part as you can see here um, and then after a while the air bubbles will start to pop and disappear as it has some self leveling properties. So ideally you want to leave these overnight uh, or for a couple of days. Um, I took full advantage of the British weather and got them outside in the sun. Now the next stage of the process is to flat those off uh, using wet or dry sandpaper uh, until you get a nice smooth finish all over. But you've got to take care of the drips with this coating uh, so they need a, a fairly coarse abrasive. Uh, in this case I've hit them with the 80 grit and then worked my way up uh, to get them smooth. So what you can see here is the, the final sanded part. Uh, and you can see here showing off the lower spoiler with that nice glossy epoxy coating applied to it all ready to be flatted off. There's a huge amount of work that goes into getting the surface finish just right on these, not to be underestimated. I want to say there's about 11 hours work that's gone into making the first mould you're seeing in this video. Again to wet sand through 400, 800, uh, then onto a 1200 and then to attack it with um, a bit of compound. I found the Meguiar's Ultimate Compound works quite well because it's a diminishing abrasive. So as you start to work it in, and then I'm hitting them with a coat of the uh, soft wax release agent uh, from Bonda. So as you can see, this stuff hasn't fully cured yet. It's still a little bit greasy, um, but this should prevent any resin adherence. Now, because of belts and braces and the pain I've felt in the past trying to take a mold, um, what I'm going to do is use some PVA release agent as well. Not to be confused with PVA glue. This is polyvinyl alcohol. Um, so you wipe it onto the surface uh, the alcohol evaporates and leaves behind a very thin film on the surface. So the next step is to make um, a barrier. I'm using a polypropylene sheet and some soft wax uh, to close any gaps and giving the whole thing a generous wipe over with that PVA release agent. The next step is to take some very fine uh, 100 grams per square meter chopped fiber glass cloth, lay that over the top and then roller it uh, with a unimold coupling resin and a very important step, you want a good connection between that coupling coat and the gel, so I'm using a roller to work out all the air bubbles between the, uh, the laminate and the mould. Quite a painstaking process, but it's time well invested, as obviously I'll be wanting to use these moulds several times in the future. It's not just a, a fit and forget, I want this to be durable. So really getting into the corners, working out those air bubbles and making sure I've got really good consolidations in the areas of the mould that are going to see the most abuse. Uh, but it's so important to really get into those edges, uh, so I probably spent a good five minutes going around making sure I'd got all the air bubbles out. So next up we're going to be using a tooling resin. So this stuff has got more fillers and compounds in it to make it a bit more robust. Uh, much the same process, so you take a cloth and apply. And I've done a little traveller just to check I'm getting good release from that polypropylene. It all looks good, so that black gel coat you see on the back of the fibres can be polished. So here we are, the following morning, uh, once it's all cured, it's changed colour, gone to this lovely Bailey's cream. Um, I now have to peel off that barrier, revealing the tooling surface. Obviously, you want to keep the part, the buck, in place, ready to take the next mould, because you've got to do the second side. But all the sort of retaining features and indexing you see around the outside can be fished out. Uh, it's effectively a soft wax that can be used again and again. So a simple lollipop stick is good enough to clean out the worst of it and then give it a prod um, to free up any remaining wax. And then it's time to clean it all down, scrape away any of the filleting from the sides because we want a nice crisp edge onto the mould and to give that a coat again. 
So once that's cured and we've got the three layers in place, it's time to drill out some bolt holes for clamping the thing together later. I'm going to be making these end plates in two parts and I want to be able to bond and join them. Do not breathe in the dust. It's really bad for your lungs, so go around with a vacuum cleaner, wear a mask when you're drilling uh, any kind of composites. And there we have it. So I'm using some wedges and a chisel to free up the two sides of the gel coat. Again, separated by that layer of a polyvinyl alcohol. Really good release agent. 3D printed wedges, nice and cheap. Push them in, give them a twiddle, and you can hear that mold cracking as it's starting to separate. So just continuing in that process all the way around the outside of the part. It's quite hard to film this one-handed, but if you have a little listen now, you can see it's uh, pressing the two sides of the mold apart. So after two or three minutes of banging wedges in around the perimeter, you can then lift it away. And there you have it, one side of the mold. All the green and yellow bits you see will wipe away. That's the wax and the release agent. And then the second side just pulled out of the mold. So obviously done a, a reasonable job making sure the release agent was there. Uh, I then need to go and clean these up. Last stage, put a part number and a label on that uh, buck for the uh, right hand end plate sit back and enjoy the work. So it's been a heck of a journey we've been on, uh, starting out with handcrafted foam that you see here, digitizing, 3D printing that into a model that we could use to check the interfaces with the other parts of the spoiler assembly, and then producing the final part, which was gloss coated, waxed, and then coated in release agent, ready uh, to be turned into the final mold. And here we have it. So this is a, a two side mold, obviously it needs polishing and cleaning up. Really taking my time over this because I want to get it right. I'm looking forward to getting started on the production part. Now for some reason I couldn't work out why the left hand side wouldn't fit in the right and then my brain twigged. <laughs> so there we go, can't always get it right. So thanks very much for watching guys. And until next time, Engineer out.